My name is Fritz Winkel, and I was 12 years old in 1944, when on Christmas Eve, I suddenly found myself in the middle of what would become the famous Battle of the Bulge. War does not stop for holidays. Fighting raged everywhere. The countryside was littered with bodies and equipment. Fritz! Komm mit! Schnell! But my mother was not the kind of person to let events control her. Wie weit ist das noch? Ich hoffe weit genug. Was ist, wenn Papa jetzt zu Weihnachten nach Hause kommt und wir sind nicht da? Er wird schon wissen, dass wir zur Hütte gegangen sind. Jetzt beeile dich. Achtung! Was ist denn das? Das ist ein toter Schermann. Komm weiter. Beeile dich. It was a season of goodwill to all mankind. Yet there seemed no end to the war, no end to the fighting, suffering. With food and basic supplies almost impossible to find, and our home destroyed in a bombing raid, my mother made a momentous decision. She decided that we would seek refuge in our family's old hunting cabin. Du wirst schon sehen, wir werden hier sicher sein. As I entered the lonely, empty space, I had no idea it would be the most memorable Christmas of my life. Je mehr, umso besser. Es ist ja heiliger Abend. Geh weg von dort, Fritz. Es ist Zeit für deinen Unterricht. Mama, nicht heute Abend. Kindly go and get your book. Warum soll ich? In Englisch, Fritz. Englisch. I don't see why I must learn English. Franz Ulmer says that one day soon we will conquer the world and everyone will have to speak German. Really? And how does he know that? His father says so. And he works for the Führer. Franz Ulmer's father is a minor official and he knows nothing. But the Führer knows everything. He does not know everything. 
<laughs> he simply forces our people to believe that he does. Mama, you mustn't speak like that. Is Your that... book, Fritz? This is about. I feared is this way. A man has a quarrel with another man and kills him. Have you ever seen any Americans, Mama? Yeah. Before the war, many American tourists would come to visit. What were they like? Just like us, I suppose. Only different. I saw an American once who had young from his burning airplane. The shoemaker shot him. He said it was his duty. Oh, that was not his duty. That was murder. Did no one try to stop him? Why? The American had been trying to kill us. Do not worry, Mama. After Christmas, when I'm called to do my duty, I will not shoot them. I will take them prisoner. Fritz, you are not becoming a soldier. Oh, yes. Willy Ernst has already been called up, and he is only two months older than me. Oh, listen to me, Fritz. We are not going back to town. And you are not joining the Hitler Youth and carrying guns. But, Mama, it is my duty to... Papa? Papa! Back here. Hey. Stay where I can see you. Understand? Not a sound. Easy, soldier. Easy. We gotta clean this thing out. Give me some hot water and the field dressing for my pack. Keep your eye on those two out there. Hey! Where are you going? Uh, I have hot water on the stove. I'll get it. It's okay, J just relax. Speak English too? Yeah. You like Huck Finn? Yeah. What about Tom Sawyer? Yeah. I like that book very much. I like Tom. He's a smart boy. Smart. That's right. Tom's always on the move. What else you read? Moby Dick. The last of the Mohicans. No kidding. Those are good books. What about Mein Kampf? No. 
It's a lousy read anyway. Here you go. Betty's taking care of the hot water. It's on its way. What do you mean she's taking care of the hot water? She's heating it up. You let her heat it up? It's just hot water. Are you forgetting something here, Private? Oh, We're at war with these people. No, but it's just... But what? Haven't you seen enough by now to know they are not to be trusted? You want them to do something for you. You keep an eye on them at all times. Did you? Huh? Did you keep an eye on them at all times? No. Then how do you know what she put in? It is hot water. Just hot water. It's a clean cloth to clean the wound. We won't be needing you anymore. Let me give you a piece of advice, Roxy. You want to make it through this war alive, the only person you trust is wearing the same uniform as you are. Now get out of here and dig up some sulfur packs. We need to disinfect this thing. Soldier, may I ask how long you intend to stay here? I don't know, ma'am. That's something I'm gonna have to take up with the sergeant. I take it you are lost. Yeah, that's right. Herbie took a hit, carried him from the line, and the snow came in, and, well, here we are, huh? There's no sulfur bags! There's gotta be! You keep looking! Then your unit is not very far. No, ma'am, can't be more than. Sorry. Sorry. Those are the kinds of questions you shouldn't be asking. Sarge! They're behind the wall! They're behind the wall! No! No! Rasty, get in here! Give me a hand! It's not soft. Hey, Sarge. Damn it! Well, hold him down while I clean this thing out, would you? Hurry, hurry, it's okay. Hurry, hurry. It's okay, it's me. It's Jimmy. Jimmy? Jimmy. Yeah. What happened? What are we doing here? I was behind the wall, remember? Yeah. Yeah. The crowd started shelling and... and we got hit. It hit? Let me see. No, no, let me see. You're gonna be fine, Herbie. Uh, Herbie, you're gonna be fine. It's okay. So I just taking care of you. Sarge? Sarge! Am I hit bad? It's all right, Herbie. Everything's gonna be all right. Just relax while I clean this thing out, all right? See? See? It's good. It's good. Is there any shrapnel in there? I don't think so. I'm no medic, but it looks like this thing went clean through. Lucky it didn't sever an artery. You sure there's no sulfur pads? I told you, we're out. Perhaps this will help? No. It is disinfectant. Hold it. Sorry to burn. It's a wound. We'll have to be closed soon, or infection will set in. What are you, a nurse or something? No. Only a school teacher. Only? There's nothing wrong with that. I think again, Rassie. In this country, they teach things that don't belong in any schools. A little tyke out there's probably already been fitted for his jackboots. Where's that kid, anyway? He's just outside, bringing in more firewood. Get outside and find that kid. Bring me my carbine. Right. It's okay. Totally. I'm Come on. Come on. Sarge, you better come out of here. What is it? They were right there. Lady, I'm not even going to count to three. Unless you tell me right now what I... you've done. 
will not tolerate weapons into my house. You can have them back when you leave. What? In case you haven't noticed, lady, there's a war on, and your house is right in the middle of it. That makes it a shelter for my men, a base of operations, a hospital, a barracks, a bunker, and whatever the hell else I say it is until I say it isn't. Do you understand me? Rassi, get outside and find out what the kid did with the guns. Beat it out of him if you have to. No, no, oh, no. You can stay here with me. No, no. Hey. What's up, buddy? Getting more firewood, are you, huh? It's a... It's a good man. Where'd you put the guns? Look, you know this is not gonna work. So don't make me get angry at you. Just tell me where you put the guns and we can stay friends. Damn it, kid. No games. What the friggin' guns? <laughs> of course, someplace safe. Thanks, pal. We are not friends. We will never be friends. I'm sorry to hear that. Why not then? You are an American. You wish to destroy our country in the Führer. Really? And where'd you hear that? On the radio. No kidding. <laughs> well, you're right about the last part. If I could get these hands around the Führer's neck, I'd wring it like a chicken. Feel good about it, too. But I'm not your enemy. He is. But his day of reckoning is coming soon. And that'll be a great day for all of us, including you, even if you don't know it yet. And don't believe everything you hear on the radio. Some of the things they say just ain't so. Come on, give me that, all right? Get inside, get inside. Okay, come on. Come on. Not a word unless I say so, all right? understood perfectly well what was said, Frau. Er ist allein. Mach dich bereit. American soldier, let us talk. You are alone, and there are three of us. Think again, Herman. I've got them covered from in here, Rassi. Got you, Sarge. Put the guns down before this gets ugly. Nein, noch nicht. Nein, bitte. Legt eure Waffen nieder. Mein Zorn ist draußen. So, my friend, it seems you have an innocent young boy back there with you. Surely you do not want him to get hurt? What do I care? He's one of yours anyway. Oh, no, nein! No! Stop this, all of you! Stop this madness! 
You heard her! Put your guns down! Alright then! Good. That's real good. Good. Don't move! Don't move! Let's stay down! Good to go out here, Sarge! All right, get in the house! Get your men in the house, now! Get in the house. Go on. Go on. Very clever. Very clever indeed. And very clever of you, Frau. I said no guns inside the house, Sergeant. Are you crazy? Get out of the way. No. No guns. I said move aside, lady. You might be dead right now if it were not for me. She's got a point, Sarge. Shut up, Rassy! Now move out of the way. We're going in. If you want the comfort of my home, it will be on my conditions. The guns remain outside. Let's get something straight. This lady has offered us all shelter for the night. Her only condition is that we leave the weapons outside and consider this neutral territory. You okay with that? Yeah. Very well. I guess we have a deal. Thank you. Fritz! Take these and put them with the others. Christmas, everyone. <laughs> well, since you are all guests in my house, let us introduce yourselves. I am Elizabeth Binken, and this is my son Fritz. Sergeant Ralph Blank. This is Private Jimmy Rassi. Lieutenant Hans Klostermann. This is Sergeant Marcus Müller. Private Peter Heinrich. Is then das die Möglichkeit? Erwarten. Ich mag die Art des Feldwebels nicht. That could have a difficult time. What was that? You got something to say? He says that you are trouble. Well, he's got that right. Oh, not in my house. Do your men speak any English, Herr Leutnant? Yeah. Sergeant. But not Private Heinrich. Then may I suggest that we all do so in order to avoid any possible confusion? Very well, then. Sarge! Sarge! It's another one of my men. He's been hit. I guess it's time we put that deal to the test, huh? You stay here, Rassie, right? Where are we? Sarge! Perhaps one of you has some medical knowledge. Just relax. The soldier is very badly wounded. 
Well, let us see. Shall we, Sergeant? Setz dich hierher und wärme dich auf. Danke. It's all right. Everything's going to be okay. This is a serious wound. That's right. Idiot. Idiot. Hey, stay with me, Herbie. You stay with me. Sorry. Listen, I'd love to sit around and chat with y'all, but unless you got something you... Kindly hit this up, Frau Winken. Yeah. It's a cold spread him infection. You must cauterize the wound or he may slowly bleed to death. No. No. And wait right through. You a medic? Wounded. The walking wounded assists the doctors. He's in front. He's in front. Caucasus. Now here. You? South Africa, Italy. Now here. Join the army, see the world. Oh. Yeah. What's wrong with you? You have changed sides, Frau Winken. Are you aware of the consequences of such an act? I'm not siding with anyone. Contrary. You have helped the enemy. That is an act of treason. They forced the begin with guns. I then agreed to let them stay on conditions that they leave their weapons outside. That hardly seemed treasonous to me, Herr Lieutenant. No. But you could have warned us that they were unarmed. Yet you did not. No, I did not. Because I was afraid that you would start shooting. Afraid for my son. Well, I hardly think President of the People's Tribunal would consider those mitigating circumstances. And we know Herr Freisler deals with traitors. Herr Freisler's court is a perversion of justice. All its judgments are foregone conclusions. If one can be deemed a traitor, for refusing to renounce one's moral obligations, then I am indeed guilty. Now, if you will excuse me. Careful, Frau Winken. The Americans have not won the war yet. Herr Leutnant, warum sind wir hier mit unseren Feinden? Ist der Krieg vorbei? Nein, noch nicht, gebreiter Heinrich. Aber einige von uns scheinen das vergessen zu haben. Easy, Herbie, easy. Everything's gonna be fine, all right? You must hold him. Hold him down hard. Jimmy, don't leave me here! Bastard! Hold him! Ah! Ready? No, no, yeah, no, go! No, no. Go! Ah! Ah! Hold him! Ah! Come on, Hermie! Ah! Come on, Hermie! Ah! Let's go, Hermie! Ah! 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 Ah!
Be tough for me. Be tough for me. One last time. Let's go. Let's go. Be tough for me, Ruby. Be tough. Be tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, man. Yeah, that's right. It's done. It's done, man. That's it, buddy. That's it. We'll probably be unconscious for a while. I'll be damned. The bleeding stopped. We need to disinfect and dress the wound properly. We will take care of that. Thank you, Sergeant Mueller. What are you doing here? I am just trying to do what I think is right. My eldest son, Paul, died at Stalingrad. He was shot and bled to death because there was no one there to help him. No one. I'm sorry to hear that. What I meant was, why would you bring your boy here at a time like this? Our town is under constant bombardment. It is much safer here. Closer to the front lines. You know they're gonna come right by you in a day or two. The war will soon be over. The sooner, the better. Is he going to be all right? Yeah. Thanks. It was a noble initiative, Sergeant Mueller. Let us hope your efforts will be rewarded. The patient is better, I hear. Survive. That is good. One of our units will be here shortly, and then he will receive excellent medical attention. I wouldn't count on your boys getting here first. But you are already behind our lines. Not for long. Wishful thinking, Sergeant. But we shall soon resume the offensive and have you running back to the English Channel just like we did to the French and British at Dunkirk. Only this time, we won't make the same mistake, I assure you. I don't think so. This offensive was your last gasp. Now the war is almost over and you know it. We'll be running all right. Running as we kick your sorry butt. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. I remind you of our agreement. Now kindly leave your war outside. Do forgive me, Frau. I should have realized that the sergeant and I would have a difference of opinion on such matters. I think you and I would have a difference of opinion about a lot of things. May I suggest that on this holiest of nights, we try instead to discover what we have in common. Hmm. Night off sounds good to me. War will still be waiting out there for us tomorrow. Then it is a great. Hmm? Yeah. Good. Well then, if you will all be patient, I will prepare us something to eat. Ma'am, ma'am. You don't have to do that. Yeah, we can take care of ourselves. Oh, it is nothing. Only a little potato soup. But we have learned to be grateful for small things. Fritz, the dishes, please. 
Well, then I guess it's gonna have to be pot luck. Hey, come on, you guys, ante up. What? What's the matter, Lieutenant? Your mama never tell you? Never go to a dinner party empty-handed. Oh, yes, of course. Honey, Müller. The Russians, please, have it on the Otis, Otis. Well, the least we could do is make a little contribution. A little? Danke. Now we really can have a Christmas dinner. That's the idea. So, let's see what we got here. Lieutenant Klosterman's generous contribution, huh? Four slices of rye bread, a piece of bratwurst, and uh, a jar of pickled onions. Hmm. Kind of Spartan, Lieutenant. Russian, actually. I do apologize. Is this is all I have to offer? Well, it's a start. Let's see what Sergeant Mueller's got. Okay, four slices of rye bread, a piece of sausage, and... Hello. What's this? Cookies. Cookies? The mighty Wehrmacht marches on cookies? <laughs> My wife made them. She sent some with every letter. Well, that's very generous of you, Sergeant. Please offer your wife our thanks and, uh, while you're at it, put in another order for me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Private Heinrich, you're up next. Let's see what we got here. Six slices of bread, a piece of sausage, and, uh, Nothing. No wife to send you any cookies there, Private Heinrich? How about your mama? Er will wissen, ob deine Mutter dir manchmal Sachen schickt. Beide meine Eltern sind in einem Bombenangriff umgekommen. He says both of his parents. I think I understand. Tell him I'm sorry. Er sagt, dass ihm das leid tut. Ja. Well, what about you Americans? You seem to have come well prepared. Always. Boy Scouts motto. So, let's see what our sergeant has to offer here. Don't lay it on too thick. Just get on with it. Huh? Right, old Sarge. Just the menu to join, no extras. That's your department, Rassing. Well, here you got a fine example of American military cuisine. Your standard issue, K-rations, hmm? One can, mystery meat. One can, baked beans, hmm? Some wheat crackers, peanut butter, and pineapple. Pudding. <laughs> this is exactly why the Wehrmacht will prevail. Huh? What will your poor soldiers do should your army ever run out of pineapple pudding? Ask for banana. Besides, you haven't tasted it yet. Sounds to me like you just might have to get used to our catering, Lieutenant. I think not. What about you, Private Rossi? It's your turn. What have you brought? You seem to have a lot of supplies. Must be my uh, Italian origins, ma'am. If I'm gonna die, it ain't gonna be a hunger. He's also an A1 scrounger. Negotiator, if you don't mind, Sarge. <clears throat> well, thank you all for your contributions. Fritz, finish setting the table and then come and help me in the kitchen. Du auch, Peter. Help me with these things. Allow me to help you also, Ovinkin. Please, sir, please, sir. 
On the table. Fritz, wie alt bist du? Of course. We mustn't let our friends think we are conspiring against them. So tell me, Fritz, where's your father? In the Wehrmacht? Yes, sir. He's in the army. Any brothers, sisters? My older brother, sir. He was killed at Salingrad. He died for his country. There is no greater honor. No, sir. And what about you? Are you ready to serve in defense of the fatherland? Yes, sir. I shall join the Hitler Youth as soon as my papers arrive. That is good. So you have not been called yet? No, sir. I see. Well, I should let you continue. Give to be out in the forest on a cool October morning, looking for truffles. Will we ever do things like that again? Yeah. One day when this cursed war ends, all this insanity. How did we ever get fooled into going along with all this? I don't know. Well, we are all guilty, I suppose. I kick myself for not having done something sooner. But there was still time. Yeah. Now it is too late. <laughs> Speak out now and they simply take you outside and shoot you. I know this from personal experience. Not your husband, I hope. A friend. Another school teacher. My husband is with the army. He's a baker. He is well then, I hope. I do not know. I have not heard from him in over two months. Yeah, well, cooks are usually far behind the lines, you know. We never let anything happen to them. As our forces are retreating so fast now, I'm sure he just hasn't had time to sit and write you. Yeah. Yeah. That must be it. Are you late for something private? Late? Yeah, I'm late. I had a whole life planned until you guys invaded Poland. Sorry for the inconvenience. But the threat of a Polish attack left us with little choice. What a load of malarkey. Bunch of yokels on horseback. Must have been a real threat to your panzers. And what about you? Isn't there someplace else you'd rather be? I do not think of this. I am or it is my duty to be. And if you die? It would be an honor for me to die in such circumstances. Death is no great matter. Well, it is to me. I prefer the alternative. I would not expect you to understand such things, Private Rassi. Sounds like you're getting personal, Lieutenant. Well. Let's just say that it is unfortunate that our former Italian allies do not have the same iron resolve as we Germans. 
Well, let's see now. Out of respect for Frau Vinken, I'm gonna let that one slide. But be careful. Don't get me stamped. At least they had the moxie to get rid of the megalomaniac that was destroying their country. Too bad you don't have the resolve to think for yourselves and do the same. Supper is served. Hurry, gentlemen, and bring something to sit on. to join me in a short prayer. I give it. Lord, we give thanks for this food, and we ask in his name to put an end to this war and to bring comfort and peace to all its many victims. Amen. Amen. Pass your balls. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Voila. Huh? Ah. To a Bordeaux's finest. Oh, well, you are certainly full of surprises, Private Rossi. Jimmy, you can call me Jimmy. Jimmy. Or perhaps I should say Weihnachtsmann. What? Oh, what is this? Um, so, uh, San Santa Claus. Santa Claus. <laughs> I wonder what else do you have in there? Oh, the night is young, man. No, Elizabeth. You can call me Elizabeth. How long have you been lugging these bottles around with you? Since D Day? <laughs> eh, just about, Sarge. Now they're herpes, but I don't think you'll mind. Hey, to our hostess, huh? Whose common sense, decency, and stubbornness have made this evening possible. May she soon live in the peaceful world that she deserves. To Elizabeth. To Elizabeth. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> now may we eat. Please sit. I will check him for you. That's all right, Lieutenant. He's my man. I can take care of him. Let him sleep. He'll be fine. Good. Then everyone may begin. Oh, you don't have to tell me twice, Chris. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I have never understood the American fascination with baseball. To me, that is when it struck me what my mother had done. Somehow these soldiers were not so fearsome anymore. They could have been family or friends. And it appeared as though my mother's wish was coming true. As if the end of the war was beginning right there at the dinner table of Elizabeth Lincoln. Three, two boys and girl. Mm. Let me try some of that right there. Right? Yeah, of course you will. The meal was only the beginning. Christmas is the season of surprises, and the evening certainly had a few surprises left in store. Elizabeth, this is the best meal I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Surely you exaggerate a little, no? <laughs> oh, not at all. No, -uh. as they say, everything is relative. Well, relatively speaking, this meal was delicious. <laughs> right, guys? Hmm? Yeah, thanks, Elizabeth. It tasted great. <laughs> Thank you. How about you, Lieutenant? Don't agree? What? Uh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Frau Winken. It's, uh, it's very good. You have been very quiet down there, Lieutenant. Is something bothering you? No. Thinking. That is all. There's no law against that in the Third Reich, I suppose? Not yet. <laughs> 
And what were you thinking about? Your family? Actually, I was... When was the last time that you were home? December 1942. Oh, for Christmas? For my older brother's funeral. He was a Panzer Company commandant killed in Russia. And we were all very proud of Gunther. He brought great honor to our family. Only two months before, he had won the Iron Cross, like my father and uncle in the Great War. And now, well, I am the only son, so I must continue the family tradition. That's quite a responsibility to bear. Makes me kind of glad my old man was just a stonemason. My father was also in the Great War. Was a handsome man until he marched off to the sun and had half of his face blown off. What was left was a horrifying sight. From that point on, my mother would not allow any mirrors or any shiny surfaces into our home. But our pain was nothing compared to his. He would drink constantly until he drank himself unconscious. And then he would have nightmares and scream as if being tortured. He finally shot himself in our parlor. I was 12, and it was his 32nd birthday. Do not talk to me about the honor of war. Well, uh, let's see what we have for dessert, huh? Let's see, we got, uh, we got eight cookies, uh, courtesy of Frau Mueller, and pineapple pudding, huh? <laughs> Private Heinrich, some pineapple pudding? Yeah, für dich. Thank you. Private Citizen Winken. Thank you. All right. Elizabeth, would you like a cookie? No, yeah, thank you. Anybody else? No, are you kidding me? Come on. Yeah, me too. Believe me, they are delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Santa? Well, I think we should uh, probably give Elizabeth a hand. Oh, no, 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 everyone, relax. No, no, really. No, 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 it's, I will take care of everything. It's not a problem. Okay. Hey, Sarge, I'll take that. Yeah. Don't have to do Thanks. this. Well, if you'll excuse me. <clears throat> Going somewhere, Sergeant? You guys might be able to hold it in all night, but I gotta go to the latrine. Yeah, I too must relieve myself. Let's, darling. When you are done, you and Peter can bring in the dishes. Yeah? Tell her. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, why are the leaves so verdant? Nine of date, Peter. Hmm? Oh Tannenbaum, oh Tannenbaum, wie treu sind deine Blätter? Not only in the summertime, but in the winter is thy prime. Well, I am glad they are relieving themselves. Too bad it's got to be at our expense. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if there's anything left. Okay. I'm going to go give them a hand. Come on, you guys. The sooner we get this done, the sooner Santa shows. Wow. I like it very much. 
suspect I know your secret, Frau Winken. I have no secrets, Lieutenant. Are you sure? This is a unique situation. But temporary, I assure you. Tomorrow we soldiers must go back to war, back to our opposing sides. No, not at all. What about you? Whose side will you be on, Frau Winken? Or more precisely, whose side would you like to be on? trying to say. Just that I know why you are here. It bothered me why a mother would bring her son up through our lines whilst a great battle is raging. Usually civilians go the other way, but not you. Why? Because you hope to get through our lines to the American side. Would I do such a thing? For Fritz. You see, it occurred to me that through every town we went through, boys much younger than he were already bearing arms. But not he. Why not? How is it that he is the only boy his age who has not received his column papers yet? Or has he? I make no excuses. I have already lost one son and possibly a husband. I will not see my only remaining son give his life for a cause I no longer believe in. This is the last of it. Excuse me, Lieutenant. So, guys, what are we going to do about dressing up that naked Christmas tree, huh? You don't have any decorations. Not yet. Oh, let me see what I can find. Oh, come on, let's go. Come on, let's get to the tree. Come on, Peter. Anka. Cigars and pineapple pudding. We are kilometers from home, yet we barely have enough rations. And America is an ocean of air, and you have everything. And we haven't even started breathing heavy yet. Kid in there, Heinrich. How old is he? Turns 15 next spring. He survives that long. We now feed children to the meat grinder. What about the ones that do survive? How are you going to make them kids again when this is all over? I don't know. And your boy in there is a wounded man. How old is he? 21. It's an old man in this game. <sighs> he might even get to be a bit older, thanks to you. It is difficult, hmm? Not to get close to the good ones. Herbie? <laughs> Worst soldier I've ever seen. Can't clear his weapon, bunches up with the other guys, can't put him on the point because he's always daydreaming. And you never daydream, Sergeant? Sometimes it is what keeps me alive. Well, Herbie daydreams all the time, and that can get you killed. <laughs> Been with me since day one. Him, Meatball Prestiani, Winky Collar, Johnny Simone. Great bunch of guys. Came over together in 42 off a troop ship onto a landing craft into North Africa, Italy. Now here. 
Along the way, I lost every one of them. Except Herbie. Worst damn soldier I've ever seen. What is it, son? My mother wanted me to tell you that you're decorating the Christmas tree. Wow. We better go inside then, huh? Check it out. What do you think, Sarge? That's yeah, not bad. <laughs> ah, let's see what else we got here. Ah, yes. A little more snow, huh? All right. There we go. I see you are not a traditionalist, Frau Wink. I know. How's that? The Leutnant is referring to the fact that in our country, the children are not present for the decorating of the tree. That's a bum deal. I miss half the fun. Yes. But as we all know, our hostess prefers to do things her own way. Nothing wrong with that. There are more of you like her. Not one of us would be here right now. I'd be back in Brooklyn in my mother's kitchen, sipping vino, <laughs> getting my hands slapped for mooching her spaghetti sauce. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Looks pretty good. There's something missing, though, huh? Something for the top of the tree. That's right, Lieutenant. Something shiny, huh? Rassi, what are you doing? Just for tonight, son? There we go. Well, it looks wonderful. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good Weihnachten. Hallo, Weihnachten. Stille Nacht, heilige Nacht. Alle schläft, einsam wacht. Nur das traute hochheilige Paar. Holder Knabe im lockigen Haar, schlaf in himmlischer Ruhe, schlaf in himmlischer Ruhe. Wunderschön, Peter. Schön, Peter, sehr schön. He was in the choir at Köln Cathedral. Mm. No kidding. A voice like that, he can make a statue cry. Well, <clears throat> I think it's time to hand out the gifts, huh? Gifts? Really? Didn't I tell you Santa was gonna be here? Hmm? Geschenke. Peter? Chocolate? Huh? Thank you. There you go, that's for you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Elizabeth. What's this? Sorry, guys. Nothing for you. I'm all, I'm all out. <clears throat> I think maybe uh, I've got a little something for all of us. Huh? You son of a gun. How long you been hoarding that? 
saving it for the end of the war, but I guess Christmas came first. What's wrong, Lieutenant? Did you get Traded for it. Two zippos and a curtain of cigarettes. Liar. I told you. I traded for it. Liar. You took it from the body of a German soldier. Oh, Easy, Lieutenant. To take cigarettes, a watch, or money. That is one thing. But to take a soldier's medals is highest honor. It's the most dishonorable thing imaginable. Back off, Lieutenant. Back off. This is an outrage. You have no decent decency. You know, I don't need any service from the likes of you. What are you going to do? Are you going to be a scavenger? You're nothing but a scavenger. Sarge! I got him! Move away from him, Sarge! I got him! Herbie, take it easy. Herbie, give me the gun. Sarge? Here. That's right, Herbie. It's me. Now give me the What's gun. happening here, Sarge? What's happening? For Christ's sake, Herbie, would you give me the gun? No. But, Sarge! You okay? Herbie! Herbie! Sarge. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Sarge. Hey, Sarge. It's okay. 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 They found my father's body. It was stripped naked and thrown to the ground. It took carcass of an animal. They took everything, including his necklace. It's lucky, it's just a grace. It's not too serious. I will take care of this. Come, come. Come on. Let's get him, Peter. Halt still. Sorry, I can't tell you the name of the soldier it came from. Like I said, I traded for it.
Hey, Fritz. Is Peter gonna be all right? Yeah. You and I still friends? We're friends. Forever? Forever. Forever's a long time, you know. Forever. That's a good man. Hey, you see that bright star up there? Yeah, serious. The brightest star in the sky. How'd you know that? My father. He loves to study the stars. Me was my uncle Ennio. <laughs> we used to spend all night on his roof with his telescope. Bet you didn't know it's not one, but two. Yeah, I did. So close together, it looks like one from down here. You're a pretty smart guy, huh? Yeah. Do you know how far it is? Not exactly, but uh, I know it's one of the closest. 8.7 light years. Makes you feel kind of small, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's good. A little humility is a good thing. Uh, guess it's time for a little shut eye, huh? Yeah. Are you in charge here, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir, and <clears throat> no, sir. Well, which is it? Are you or are you not the senior man here, Sergeant? What the? What the hell's going on here? Are these men your prisoners? Well, not exactly, sir. Not exactly? What then? Uh, well, no, sir. I suppose you could say that we're all guests here. Guests of this lady. Guests? Yes, sir. Private Rassi and I got lost in the storm trying to evacuate one of our wounded. He's in the next room. We stumbled on this cabin in the woods. Frau Vinken was good enough to invite us in to share food with us. And the Krauts? They showed up lost a short while later. I suppose Frau Vinken fed them too, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, we got one here for the book, Sergeant. In the middle of a decisive battle, you take out time for Christmas dinner with the enemy. Not sure how that's going to sit with your battalion commander. Unless, of course, he's around here, too, somewhere. No, sir. No. Well, I hate to break up the party, Sergeant. But there's a war to be won. Where are your weapons? Outside, sir. Frau Vinken made us all leave them outside. It's her condition for letting us in to take shelter. Outside? Yes, sir. Leutnant. Hände runter. Kommen Sie jetzt hier. Schnell, Leutnant! Leutnant Hans Klostermann, auf Ihren Befehl, Herr Hauptmann. Warum haben Sie Ihre Waffe niedergelegt? Es ist meine Schuld, Herr Hauptmann. Schweigen Sie! Leutnant? Frau Winken hat darauf bestanden, dass wir alle unsere Waffen draußen lassen, wenn wir Unterkunft haben wollen. 
Sie hat darauf bestanden. Und Sie, als Offizier des Reiches, Sie haben vor Ihren Forderungen kapituliert. Wir hatten keine Wahl, Herr Hauptmann. Die Amerikaner hatten uns überrascht. Wir nahmen an, Sie waren bewaffnet. Aber Frau Winken wusste, dass Sie unbewaffnet waren. Stimmt das? Ja, Herr Hauptmann. Und sie hat euch nicht gewarnt? Nein, Herr Hauptmann. Nehmen Sie Ihre Männer und holen Sie Ihre Waffen. Jawohl! SS Captain Walter Dietrich at your service, Sergeant Blank. Sergeant Ralph Blank. Well, Sergeant Blank. Looks like you and your friends had quite the celebration last night. What's wrong, Sergeant? Can't go your tongue. I heard all about you guys. Brought up in the States, perfect accents. All you need is a set of fatigues could be dropped behind our lines to destroy and sabotage at will. That's right. Clever, isn't it? You guys never play on a level field, huh? <laughs> oh, come on, Sergeant. Don't give me that crap about rules and fair play. This is war, not a ball game. Maybe the gods of baseball prefer a level field, but the gods of war, they prefer the side that's a little more daring and resourceful. I always thought we'd be on the same side in this. Too bad President Roosevelt doesn't think like Mr. Lindbergh. Yeah, too bad for you guys. The day's soon coming when you're going to get yours. Well, you'll never see that day, Sergeant. Good. Bringen Sie jetzt die Keller aus. Und erschießen Sie sie. Was? What was that, Sergeant? Sure as hell wasn't Merry Christmas. Can it blank? Yet, schnell raus mit ihnen. Aber Herr Hoffmann, die Vorschriften erlauben nicht. Leutnant! Sie haben gehört, was ich gesagt habe. Machen Sie das nicht, Hans. Halten Sie Ihren Mund. Schnell! Das wird Ihrer Familie keine Ehre bringen, Hans. Nur Schande. Halten Sie deinen Mund! Mama! Sie sind eine Schöne für das Vater, Frau. Soldier. I, I dreamt I heard shouting, Sarge. Everything's gonna be fine. We gotta get going now. But you're at a friend's house. Her name's Elizabeth. She's really nice. She's gonna take care of you until our guys get here. Now you just stay here and you relax. That's an order, all right? Whatever you say, Sarge. Hey, her. No moss. No fuss. You got it. I'll catch you back in Brooklyn, all right? Sure you don't want to come with us? It's gonna be over soon anyway. How about you, Sergeant? Go, Victor. Go. Save your own lives. It is nearly over. Lieutenant. All the pineapple pudding you could eat. 
Thank you. But it is not possible. It's one crazy world, huh? Yeah. Here. You much need this. Thanks. What about the kid? Father Henry. Du bist jetzt Feldwebel Blanks Gefangener. Aber Herr Leutnant, das ist ein Befehl. Vater Heinrich. Du wirst alles tun, was er dir sagt. Verstanden? Ja, Herr Leutnant. Gut. You will do what you tell him. Well, good luck to you. Good luck, Lieutenant. Frau. This is it. Thank you, Elizabeth. You keep your head up and your eyes on the stars. Yeah. Take care, buddy. Elizabeth. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Jimmy. All right, you. Let's move out. Come on, Peter. Maybe you can teach me some German, huh? It was a Christmas miracle I shall never forget. How, because of one woman, a group of men came together as bitter enemies and parted again as friends. Later that day, an American patrol came by, and the war for us was finally over.